I have something to confess. I've been lying to you. Well, actually not just me, the entire internet has been lying to us. You know what I'm talking about, or I hope you do anyways by now. I am referring to Google's Gemini. We've all seen this video when it first came out. I remember being, wow, this is incredible. This has the potential to maybe put some challenge on ChatGPT. I shared about it on my Instagram actually, and was having great conversations with people who were using it on Bard. Only to start seeing a couple of days later, news outlets trickling, well, what ended up being true. We were being lied to. So what exactly happened? What exactly was Google lying to us about? Well, it wasn't intentional outright lying, or maybe that's me, just the Canadian in me being too hopeful in humanity. But what rather they did was in their video demo, when they were showing what Gemini is possible, Gemini being their newest AI model that they are releasing, or three different models, we'll get into that, they faked the video. And what I mean by that is instead of actually prompting Gemini to identify uh, the objects in the video or go through different exercises such as play rock, paper, scissors, what they did is they crafted the video using still image frames from the footage and prompting via a text. Now, Google's response to this coming out in the news, they are saying that for the purposes of this demo, latency has been reduced and Gemini outputs have been shortened for the purposes of this demo, latency has been reduced and Gemini outputs have been shortened for brevity. They go on to say that this is what Gemini, the multi-model, has the potential to look like, these use cases. All right, so we know we've kind of been lied to. It's a gray area. And I say kind of because yes, right now we have been, but I truly believe what they were showcasing in this video will be possible very soon. That's why they put out this video. They feel confident that this technology, these AI models that they are creating are going to get to a point where this can easily be done. And I mean, we've already seen a lot of these things. It's not new, especially with ChatGPT. So today I thought, you know what would be fun? You know what we should do? because I use ChatGPT all the time, all the time, whether I am coding, creating content, researching, it's almost like my new, it's the new Google. That's where I go to search nowadays. So I'm going to be comparing models. We are going to go on Bard, compare, which is using Gemini, and then we are going to go on ChatGPT, use GPT-4, and see what actually will provide us with better results. The purpose of this video is A, to educate us. I'm learning with you. I'm doing these things with you. But also too, I'm really curious. I wanna know what is going to give me better results when I am uh, coding, creating content, researching. I want to use the best AI model out there. So today, that is what we are going to do. Battle of the AI models. All right, we're taking a pause and going through the battle of the AI models because I wanted to address this question. On YouTube here, I asked, uh, I think it was on Friday, a while back anyways, I asked, what do you want me to cover in this video going through Gemini? Other than the obvious, seeing how it compares to other AI models, what's going on in the news around it, and the question that got upvoted the most times was around, what does this mean for the future of coders? And I know we've covered this question a little bit in past videos to varying degrees, but what does this truly mean. I mean, it feels like every day we are seeing a big tech company coming out with a new AI model that is super powered. I mean, even with Gemini and its three AI models, one is powering now Alpha Code, and they are saying, what is it? I'll put it up on screen here, but it's something like now with Alpha Code using Gemini, it can outperform, I believe it was almost 90, 80 to 90% of programmers it's outperforming, which is pretty wild. Let me, let me add a little bit more context to that here. Programmers meaning pass all the exams and code in a way that is beating all these tests. But it does get you wondering, all right, well now with Alpha Code coming out and ChatGPT being able to code, what, what is the purpose? Like why would you learn to code in 2024? Like where, what does it mean for us? Here are my thoughts around it. It is going to take away a lot of jobs and some of those jobs will include coding jobs. We'd be, I'd be lying to you if I truly didn't think that. What I do think it will mean though for coders, technical or non-technical people, is as these AI models advance and we start integrating them more at big tech, small startups, just in our daily workflows, what will happen is we will have the responsibility if we want to grow our careers in a very sustainable and also to in-demand way that we need to learn a broad 
set of skills. Gone are the days where you can learn one programming language and that is it. You don't have to ever think about learning anything ever again. You are a specialty, you're focused. On, I'm not saying specialty roles are going away. Please do not take that as what I'm saying. What I'm saying though is, if you really want to stand out in your career and grow uh, into a senior level or management level role, being open to different opportunities, different roles, different skill sets is going to become more in demand. All right. I just wanted to give that little synopsis because I think we are rightfully so freaking out about coding when it comes to AI and I'm here to tell you it's okay. It is still one of the best skills you can learn and keep with your toolkit of other skills. Curious to hear, do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. All right, we are back. I came to sit with Jack behind me in my dining room because I felt like I needed to, I don't know, does anyone else need to move places when they are working like every hour? Because that's pretty much me in a nutshell. All right, you can see on screen here, I have ChatGPT4 up and running, and we are going to ask it to provide us three different coding questions that are typically asked during interviews. And I'm going to prompt Bard and ChatGPT in the exact same way. So let's start this. All right, in ChatGPT, let's say I am a mid-level software engineer uh, looking to prepare for a technical interview. Provide me three different algorithm rhythm questions that are typically asked during coding interviews. I don't love that prompt, but let's go with it. We're keeping it real here. I'm gonna copy it so I can use it in BART as well. All right, so I can see as it's responding, one thing it does right now already is gives you know what the algorithm is, and then also too it will give um, an example, which I think is really interesting. You know, write an algorithm to find the first non-repeating element in a given array. For example, string processing manipulation. Okay, I mean, I did say. I'm mid-level and the first, at least the first one, array manipulation and searching seems very junior. String processing, even that, another very junior one. Tree graph, traversal, implement an algorithm, perform a depth first search. All right, okay, the third one's really good, I think. Okay, so now, let's leave it there. We won't do anything. Let's go into Bard. And in Bard, let's enter our prompt. I'm not, I'm not, I haven't used Bard a ton. I'm, all, I'm a chat GPT person. Let's go here. All right, so implement a func function that finds the longest common substring in two strings. All right, so another string question. Function that checks if a binary tree is balanced. Okay, that's a good one. The largest, okay, so it does, you know what? It's interesting, they did both do, um, questions around the same topics. One was around uh, a string. One was around a binary search. Was that what this one was? Oh, tree and graph tree. Okay, yeah, but still in the same realm. And then we also had number three, which is going through an array, basically. So that's really interesting to me. One thing I do like, though, about Bard that I instantly noticed is how they have diagrams here. Like, that's something that ChatGPT did not provide us. I mean, maybe they didn't need to, and that's why. But they could have done something here with the binary tree, like Bard did here. Interesting. All right, let's give it one more prompt here. Let's, another technical, write for me. Let's make it build something with code now. What could we build with code? Create for me. Here, how are we gonna do this? Let's make it make us a form in React. Create me a form with a name entry location, and password with a spot. Maybe that's how you should put with a place for with an input. That sounds better. With an input for a name, location, password. Make this for me in React. Copy. These are very, I'm almost intentionally making them very basic prompts just to see what it can do before I get into the specifics here. Like, getting really detailed with my prompts. Cause then that's, I don't know, I feel like it's going to give us better answers. So let's see what it does, just the initial level without, because a lot of times when I'm using something like ChatGPT, I'm not taking time to craft this perfect prompt. I'm just typing things in. All right, let's see here. So far it's pretty good. I think that inputs, all right. 
And then there is an explanation down here. We use the use date and we'll submit. I also, oh, this is a big win. I love how they included their sources down here. That's really cool. I don't know, I wish I didn't like Bard as much as I do, but it's, it's pretty good so far. Let's ask this in ChatGPT and see what happens now. Okay. It's gonna be the exact same, I wonder. What was this called? I do like how this one was called my form. They got more specific with the function name versus just app. That's a huge thing too. Comments of what it's doing. I do like how they used a state to store input values. I don't think they did that. Oh no, they did, yeah, of course they did. I do like how they say to use this component. That's something we didn't get with Bard. So they're saying, you know, if you actually want to implement this into a project, here's what you would do, which feels more real world. I don't know, it's a tough one. At initial input, I think they are both really interesting and really good. And honestly, I think it's comparing there are differences, but do I think that the differences are so unique that it, I think it comes down to your personal preference. I think it depends on what one you're most familiar with already and uh, what platform you typically use. I've, I've heard a lot of people though use Bard, especially through social media when I was posting, I was doing this video because its responses are more um, in depth and accurate. So that's a very interesting observation that I'm already starting to see as well. All right, this is just too close. I can't tell just by typing in prompts. So I went right to the data. Let's check out what they are saying, what the data is saying. So, and we're comparing, so for context, Gemini has different AI models. There is Gemini Pro, Gemini Ultra. Um, so I'm not comparing, I cannot compare, say, Gemini Ultra to ChatGPT, for example, because they are using different ones. So what is really important is that I compare GPT-4, which we were just using, to Gemini's AI model that they're comparing against it, which is Gemini Ultra. All right, so let's go here. Google claims that the yet to be released Gemini Ultra outperformed the state of the art models like GPT-4. All right, let's see, what did you, what did you do so good at? So they are saying Gemini Ultra received a remarkable 90% in massive multitask language understanding, showcasing its ability to comprehend 57 subjects, including STEM, humanities, and more. Whereas GPT-4 is at 86.4%. So basically Gemini Ultra outperformed GPT-4 by around 4%. Now, there goes into some other data around it, but honestly, the differences at this point are not that grand, in my opinion. I do think Bard, in this case, does take home the win overall. And I do think Gemini, especially with it coming out with Gemini Ultra model, is going to have huge impact on what is possible. And it's just the beginning. I really think though, that even if I truly believe Bard is a better AI model, I'm so used to using ChatGPT, I don't think I'm gonna switch to Bard, which is so funny to say. Curious to hear, what one are you using? Do you use Bard? Do you use ChatGPT? Leave in the comments. All right, only time will tell which AI model ends up taking the cake or first place, if you will. And honestly, I don't even know if it will end up being just one or the other. I think there will be many different, just like there's many different, ooh, I was gonna say just like there's many different search engines, but mainly Google. So we'll see, we'll see. It's very interesting times so though. I think the most important thing though is, and I hope what this video did, is encourage you to play around with these different AI models, not be scared of them or think, oh, this is gonna take over my job. We are far away from that. The main thing is being open-minded, playing around with them, getting comfortable with integrating and using AI in our daily lives because it's not going anywhere. All right, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks for following along. Leave in the comments other videos you want me to see or you want me to make that you wanna see, whether it be more hands-on uh, going through different AI models, whether it be more coding, future tech, tech news, all of the above, let me know. I don't know unless you let me know. All right, bye everyone, thank you. Oh, and subscribe, that's important too.